or YouTube page. The aim is that decision making should be transparent and in the public domain, which will involve more of our community and local democracy. By being in this council chamber, you are consenting to being recorded for your image to be added to YouTube. The images and sound may be used for training purposes. Any views expressed or the speaker's own and do not necessarily reflect the view of Good of Town Council. Please view the guidance on recording in public meetings policy if you need more. Thank you, Chief Officer. Right, apologies the same as before. Uh, yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Declarations of it. Disposable pecuniary interest in dispensations. Are there any? Uh, I think I might have a declaration of interest on item number 16, which is the butterfly garden management arrangement. That will only be a, a personal interest rather than a, a personal interest. Not financial. Not a financial one, is it? Financial interest. Okay, so we drop it down. And uh, other interest, B. Any? No? Okay. Uh, item 13, to approve and sign the minutes of the Recreation and Amenities Committee held on the 13th of June, 2023. May I do that, please? Seconded? Yeah. You? Uh, who was seconding that, by the way? Uh, Councillor Garvey. Thank you. Well done. Thank you very much. Right, we move on. To receive the notes of the Transport Working Group held on the 21st of June. Chairman, you, you, will you propose that? I will. Proposed. Election of Chair and Deputy Chair, declarations of interest, apologies, minutes. Uh, five is to receive the update on recent meetings with D&G. Six, to receive update of the ridership details of the 93. Seven, to receive an update on the £2 fare for the 93. Eight, to consider uh, progressing the draft action plan tabled at April meeting. Nine, to discuss traffic issues within the town and a coordinated approach. Ten. Right. Paul, well, you've got a seconder? I'll second it, Jeff. And Councillor Jackson, you wish uh, to... to inform the chair of my apologies for the meeting on the 19th. I will be here. Thank you. Very nice. Okay, we are all, all those in favour? Thank you. Good. To receive a presentation, uh, sorry, to, to consider amendments to the burial paperwork. Now, you've all got copies of this. Just, Chief sorry, officer. Yeah, we've just got these in front of you today, actually. But it's a little while since we've um, updated our burial work. Um, all of our paperwork is on the www.biddulph.co.uk website. And if you go along the top, um, it's services, and then there's a separate tab for burial services. And our current policy is there and um, any of our current paperwork. So it's probably probably five years or so since we had a look at these. Not, we're not suggesting a lot has changed and those items that are uh, proposed are in red. So if you look at the notice of interment, um, it's helpful um, for us to know the size of the coffin, but actually if it's a cremated remains grave, it's also helpful to know the size of a casket. So that's an addition there. Um, just in, in on the other side, it's some clarification about the role of grave manager. Um, some information that will help us to manage this process more easily on the bottom there for office use, and then a revision date. Yes. That's our notice of internment for. Mr. Deputy Bear. Yes, thank you, Chair. Uh, not sort of related to this, but not directly, just as something in cover on the county. The registrar, obviously looking at deaths and things, did we did you get contact with them? Are they coming back to us, by the way? 
May I answer? Yes, of course, yes. Because it's in the public interest and it's very exciting. And yes, the answer yes. Yes. Do, do we know what? Jody's, Jody's met with them this week. Probably not till September. They've got right, staff you. starting. Um, but that's a great result, actually, because they haven't been back in the town hall since before COVID. So yes, thank, thank you. That, was a good result. that is very useful to know, colleagues, that we will have the registrars back. That's a marvellous piece of work, Chief Officer. No, absolutely can't take any credit for that. Can't. Hello. Oh. <laughs> I wasn't saying it for that. I was just, hope, just hoping it was. Uh, that was just hoping it was concluded. That's all. It's. it's, it's thank it's, you, it's, Councillor it's, Yates. Well done, Mr. Deputy Mayor. <laughs> Um, it's, it's very, very, I'll come to you, Mr. Mayor, in a moment. Um, that's quite useful because there is a shake up in the registrar service, is there not, at this particular time? Uh, all, all we know is that there's, there's some new staffing. They're obviously looking at um, venues to kind of do more outreach work. They'll be able to do um, birth, death, you, and notifications of marriages. Jodie's done that liaising on our behalf with regards to the rooms that are available and facilities that are needed. Yeah. Um, so all, all looks very positive. I keep on saying this is why we're streets ahead. Uh, Mr Mayor and then Councillor Jones and then uh, Councillor Kasiki. Thank you, Chair. Sarah mentioned um, about the size of the copies. We'd already agreed that there's going to be certain salaries. Then it'd be larger, wasn't going to come. Absolutely. That, that's still standing there. Absolutely, if I may. Yes. Uh, you know, no. group, uh, absolutely. So the point of asking for the information is to be absolutely sure that there isn't there isn't a problem that is larger than our permitted size. We absolutely have not got enough space within our burial ground for these very large American coffins. They're, they're just we we're not set up for that. Yeah. Uh, uh, if I may, Chairs. Yes. Uh, Again, you mentioned like the American copies. I mean, some of them I know, not wood, you know, they're actually metal. I mean, I would, I would assume not that we wouldn't have metal caskets. Uh, we don't make any stipulation really no. about that. Um, <laughs> it, the size is the issue for us. We're not, we're yes. not in a position, as you know, where um, the grave is a, is a temporary grave. Yeah. So if there's exclusive rights of burial, there's the opportunity if the if that right is not renewed, as it were, we could consider using the, the grave plot for another purpose. We're absolutely not no, no, that no. bit of so in terms of the, what the person is interred within, um, we don't we don't stipulate that. I'm just thinking that if, it, if it was one of these metal caskets that seemed to be you know marked, then it's not going to degrade as quickly as the wooden copy, I would have thought. And, uh, you know, if you did want to start planting people on top of each other, you couldn't do it with a metal pocket because it wouldn't degrade. What would you know? <laughs> if, if I may, the, yes. our most recent experience is that actually people it, have gone the other way in bit of, they're actually, they're, they're more interested in the kind of wicker coffins. And that yes. Kind of thing. We've seen quite a few of those recently. Um, but certainly we can have another conversation about that. It doesn't necessarily affect the form we've got here, but I'm happy to bring back that for further discussion at a later date. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Jones. Uh, thank you, Chair. Actually, I, I think I've answered my own question. This is just for Woodhouse, isn't it? This is not yes, anything is. to do with the exist the one uh, behind the church. And this is everything. This is well, the, it's, oh, I'll ask the question that came to mind. It says that the, the, I am aware that Woodhouse Burial Ground is a lone burial ground. Memorials will be fixed back to back. Are they back to back in Woodhouse now? Yeah. So you've got one facing east, one facing west then? Yeah. I've noticed that. I, I'm, I don't know if I've got anybody in there, so I don't know. But I, I just, it's not like that a little bit. Yes. No, it's not. And, and, and obviously the design was there before I started, so I, I won't make any comment on the design. It's quite a practice now, I think, Chair. Absolutely. So it... From a, a purely maintenance perspective, that makes it much easier because people have the items next to their headstones and can whiz up and down with them there. I've got two speakers, Councillor Kasiki and uh, Councillor Carby. Councillor Kasiki. Yeah, is there much leeway on what you can put on the gravestone in relation to symbols and wording? Is anything like excluded? Um, it's... It, everything has to be signed off by me, and um, the guidance we give is that there's appropriate wording and appropriate symbols. So there is a set size 
that you cannot go above for a for a memorial and then um we review the content of the headstones to ensure they are in keeping with I, I was thinking of whether a heart would be appropriate heart or... I mean, my mother was irish <laughs> oh, oh, heart. Heart. Yeah. who said heart no 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 personal we we have all sorts of conversations about the contents of, of memorials and actually the local memorial masons know know actually what we're happy with and what we're not so um we are always trying to be clear that appropriate wording is uh is considered for the relevant people who are related to the person who is deceased and that you know it's um, right Thank you. Councillor Garvey. Thank you, Chair. It's just a comment on the uh, the back of the permission to introduce. I apply, apply the extension into the churchyard and declare that. Would that not be burial ground rather than church? No longer a churchyard, is it? That's the point of. I hate to say clarification, because the correct context. It's before your numbered list, one, two, three, one, seven. Oh, okay. Offline. Oh, yeah, both yes, brown. Sure. I, I, just, I need to change that. Yeah, it, it's just uh, your very, yeah, uh, yeah, tidying yeah, stuff, yeah, yeah. tidying stuff up, it's just a thought. That was yeah, yeah. Thank okay. you, Councillor Garvey. I've got okay. Councillor Lawton and then Councillor Jones wishes to come back. Councillor Lawton. Thank you. On, on the subject of... Uh, monumental inscriptions upon gravestones. Um, I rather think that something that might raise its head in the future will be the possibility of foreign languages being used. Now, there's nothing new about this in a sense, in that in St. I think it's St. Edward's Church in Leek, there are a number of French graves. Um, but um, I was wondering whether there is any policy on that matter. Oh, no, but the problem should be. So if we can take that back and have a consideration yes. of that and how we would check the wording. Thank you very much. That was a relevant point. Uh, Councillor Jones, you wish to come back, final speaker. No, on Councillor Kosicki's uh, uh, comments about symbolism and sort of harps and things, I'm sure I've seen one with a camper van. In, in our churchyard engraved on it so we, we're fairly <laughs> as long as it's not you know naked lady or you might get into the ball with somebody who lives on the ball with you thank you uh, right we're all done on that are we quite happy with it just, I don't know whether you want me to run through the, um, the other one that you haven't. It's fairly straightforward. The only difference there is that previously the person who was applying was at the top and, the, and their deceased person was below and we've changed it around, which makes it then more easy to follow when you've got the two bombs out. So Thank you. Think, you. So that's, the that's fine. Good. Right. Um, I'm going to move on. Uh, Are you happy to accept those? Are you happy? Yes. All those in favour? Right, you've all accepted them. Thank you very much. We move on to 15 to receive presentation on Springfield Road management arrangements. Coffee, sir. Uh, this is one that you did earlier. This is what we did earlier. Um, so, for those of you who are maybe not familiar with our management arrangements, I have done this for you um, and as a refresher for those who uh, have seen this information before. So, Springfield Road and our area there was gifted to the Town Council as part of a developer contribution. The ambition at that point by the Town Council was to turn it, turn the land into additional allotments. So, you know from previous discussions that we've probably currently got between 30 and 40 people on the waiting list, and at a rate of probably one per year, you know that we're not allocating a lot of new allotments at the moment. And the waiting list was significantly higher at the point at which this was being considered. Um, we at the time it was I was new to the council. We worked with um, an architect who put this out to tender for us. And when the project came back, it was completely unachievable financially because 
the hill needed to be underpinned and we'd have had to charge an extortionate amount of rent on our allotments to ever recoup any of the investment they absolutely took the view it wasn't worth doing. Um, so, I don't know whether you can see this here, but I'm happy to send this round. So if you go to the top of Springfield Road, it's a very nice piece of grass <coughs> at the moment. Um, Springfield Road turns into Mayfield just around the corner. Um, and this is the entire site here. Um, so it's very flat and landscaped at the top. It's got boulders around it. Um, there you are. And then it slopes away towards the houses um, at the back of St David's Way. So that's our, that's our land. So in terms of what we do with it, you'll see that that, go back. <laughs> Uh, you'll see that that's quite nicely maintained at the moment. Um, we introduced the boulders. We had extensive discussions about I boulders and fences and that sort of thing. The boulders had turned out to be a really good decision for us because actually from a maintenance perspective, it's very low and uh, also provides a very natural barrier to the site, which has been quite uh, good. Stop people parking on it. Um, it's protected it really. So that's that's just yesterday. Um, okay. So in 2022, we retended the burial ground contract and we added the main Springfield Road site to that contract. So the same contractors that mow our burial ground for a three year period um, are also now doing Springfield Road site. So this is what was in the tender. We asked them to consider um, fortnightly visits, um, yeah, approximately 14 day intervals, obviously. Um, areas to be cut during April and September, so 13 cuts and additional cuts dependent on the weather. So if we have particularly mild times, which we obviously do, and the grass starts growing a lot in March or is still growing in October, um, at our discretion, we can commission additional cuts for that. Um, areas should be kept into appearance. So what we do um, is the first cut, they usually take the grass away, but the rest of the year the grass is retained on site because obviously... The idea being that if it's cut regularly, it should manage itself. Um, so this is the information that we put in there. So as I say, it's a feed and weed on an annual basis, and that's for three years. Okay, so this is a couple of things <laughs> to bring to your attention. So if you know the area, when you're at the top of Springfield Road, um, there is a kind of rough parking area. We talked briefly before about that parking area and the need to consider doing something with that. So mm -hmm. Councillor Rogers, Councillor Hart, and I sat with allotment holders who asked us to consider that. So that's definitely something <laughs> to consider. Yes. But also there's some very wild areas. <clears throat> so um, this is one of the photos that I took the other day. This is the steep slope from the top of Springfield Road down to the St Davis Way. As well, this is the same area on the left. So I we've left it wild because we're not doing anything with it. We obviously maintain the top bit, um, which is kept very short and, and you know certainly playable for young people. Um, this bit's quite overgrown, so I think we need to take a view as to how we manage that. It might be that we just trim the edge so it's not so overgrown on the path, or it might be that you think you want to. Um, do something different with that, but I think that's something that we as a committee need to contribute yes, this year. Absolutely. And this doesn't always look like this. This is something for us to also keep in mind with regards to this area. So our allotment site is just the right of the picture. Springfield Road area is behind us, and this is the area of land that's managed by Morris Homes, which was retained after they built the St Davies Way estate. Um, and we keep an eye on that. We don't do any of the maintenance on that, um, but we just kind of keep a watchful eye on it. There is a public footpath that runs through that area, um, which does need some um, TLC, but which is not ours to maintain. So um, there we are, an overview for you. Thank you, Chief Officer. That's a pretty good appraisal <laughs> of... Um, the past history and the potential future. I've got one speaker so far, Mr. Deputy Mayor. Mm. 
I am currently developing with my uh, climate change and environment that on a new green space and verge management policy, which I would ideally like Middletown Council to fall into line with if we adopt it uh, when it's written and adopted. Uh, the emphasis will be on uh, fitting in with the, with the sort of with the requirements, the, the national guideline requirements of uh, net biodiversity gain and the new plan for nature, which is a big consultation report which is being produced by Staff to Wildlife Trust and will be issued in the next couple of weeks. The idea is, is that each green space is assessed with regard to its amenity value, i.e. is it used for people to actually play picnic, sports, recreation or whatever and, and maintain those areas specific for that, but also in areas which are not used directly for amenity, look at the opportunity for wild meadow creation which doesn't mean leave it unknown forever. It just means having minimal cut, one usually at the start of the season and one right at the end of the season, but you're promoting uh, wildlife and insects and butterflies and things in, in the meantime. And also maximising in rougher areas the optimisation of, of carbon sequestration, which is tree planting, which allows us to do a little bit of carbon offsetting. So I would like to think that that would be part of that. I'm looking at that pictures, for example, what I would envisage is that a threshold strip a reasonably wide threshold strip has stripped down the edge of the, of the footpaths for two reasons. One, it makes it look managed and not neglected. And secondly, it reduces the risk, especially with children and people walking around in shorts of being bitten by horse flies and ticks and things like that and being scratched by brambles. If we do that and we do leave areas of uh, rewilding areas of, of, of meadow, then it needs to be augmented with native seeding to give it a kickstart. And we will be producing some plaques to be actually put into the ground to actually show, to actually explain that this is a managed area and this is effectively what we're doing. So the plan is to be no conflict on, on amenity. And the obvious thing about that, and we discussed this at the Paris Assembly, is that if you're talking a cricket ground or a sports ground, then it's got to be able to play cricket and sport on it. But those nooks and crannies and the edges, they're the ones which we're looking at to try and improve the net biodiversity gain. So we don't want to leave any ground unturned with that review. And it will change some of the larger verges how we manage them in Biddle, uh, the, the Great Town as well. And we've obviously discussed that. What it won't, what it won't do is leave them neglected where everything's filling over the pavement because that isn't the intention. Everything needs to look as if it's a conscious decision to do, but it's got to be done with, with those three. Mr. Yates, just intervene. What timescale are we talking about? We are hoping to get the policy approved by November, ready for the tree planting season, with a view to starting the the new mowing cycle uh, in spring next year. Right. Okay, that sums it out pretty well. Any other speakers? Councillor Rogers. It's just a comment, really. That's the grass there where the stones are at the top of Spring Club. It's all very nice and lovely and beautiful, but based all the chain now, isn't it? We just Sorry, pay for maintenance. Sorry, I missed that. Sorry, I say that ground area at the top of Spring Club, it's very nice and with the stones around it, but Basically, it's a ball and chain to us. Is there any, anything we could possibly do with it in the future instead of just pay to have it cut all the time? Hold on it. Hold on it. Um, I know they'll be up. the chair. Come on. Uh, I think it's all we've already said. We did a survey on it and it said it would have had to be substantially underpinned to do anything with it uh, because it, it probably isn't tremendously stable. Uh, that's another good reason for keeping vehicles off it. Um, and uh, I think it is what it is. So, uh, Councillor Kosicki. Are we looking at that uh, piece of ground at the top where the rough car park is as a possible or suitable alternative for allotments? Would that be uh, a better site? I don't think any of the site is really suitable for allotments there. Um, the, the car parking is, is what's required, I think, to assist with the allotment that's adjacent to it. Yeah. Uh, to improve the, the car parking facility there because of uh, access for people who might have difficulties in walking and may need, um, you know, to, to bring a vehicle up as close to the allotment as possible. Um, but um, now we have a time scale on what the district council is planning. That gives time for the chief officer to liaise with the district. Councillor Jackson. 
Yeah. As the Jones, are you asking? I've got a lot of stars on my back on this piece of land, <laughs> one way or another. It took a long, long, long time. Um, and the history of it is we got ownership of that piece of land because the owner of that piece of land bought up hundreds of pieces of land, ex coal land right across the country, all speculation stuff. You know, if, if they bought 100 pieces and they could develop five or six of them, it was, you know, it was value for money. And that was neglected for years and years and years and years. And I had more complaints than a little with some of the, you know, the issues of dumping and whatever. What I haven't had since we've done what we've done is one single complaint about that piece of land, which is great. And um, I've got an auntie and aunt lives uh, right opposite as well, so in her eighties now, and she, you know, she's most appreciative of what we did as a council to get that piece of land done. What Sarah said about the the allotments, it, it was I was never one hundred percent behind it because it, of accessibility to that piece of land. That's the piece of land down the bank that backs on to uh, Boston Drive and the uh, like St David's Way bit. I was never a big fan of that because of, but and that, and thankfully, you know, the costumes came in as you know, as Sarah said, as exorbitant and way too much, and we got all the piece of land we perhaps could have developed for for, for that. Um, I think are we are you thinking of are you asking us tonight to to get the contractors to put that piece of land down the back of that? So I've, I've, not, no. I've not got a problem if, if, like Nigel says, put a bit of it. But quite frankly, the wilding bit has gone wild. Mm. You know, and it, you know, and all the bi biodiversity in the world is, it, you know, nature has taken its course and taken over that place from other growth in the sea. So I wouldn't really want to do anything down there at all. It's not Just leave it as it is, let it go. Um, I think all this homes land is perhaps something... And it is something I have so meant to bring up from time to time and slip my mind. Whether we can do a bit more on the Morris Homes land, see whether Morris Homes um, would be interested in just taking over that piece of land. There is a bit of a, a very dilapidated trim trail along there that's wooden and falling to bits. And I'll just take issue with Councillor Hart, you wanted the wooden fencing and I didn't, I wanted the boulders. No, it was the other way around. You wanted the wooden no, fence. No, no. I wanted the boulders right from the very start. Um, you wanted the bit called it bird, bird, beef, and sea. No, I don't know. Just to point, anyway, the, point the Clyford, yeah. uh, clarification on land which goes feral, that's not quite the same as uh, a wildflower meadow because there has got to be a degree of management with a wildflower meadow because otherwise it doesn't take long for brambles to take hold. And then it just becomes a no-go zone for the majority of things, other than rats. Okay. I don't know. Okay. And now I'm going to bring Chief Officer in, please. All I was going to say, the item is just to receive the presentation. Yes, so that's all. What I really want you to do is have the <clears throat> to know that you you are responsible for the management of that's it. So if you find yourself having a stroll in that area, you will now know if you didn't already, that the town council is responsible for the management of that land and you can go and have a look and see what you think. Yes, That's the I idea. encourage you to do so. I'll happily meet you there and talk you through it if you'd like that. We're, any of us can do yeah. that, that's no problem. But it's just, I, I really put these two items on just so that you yeah. could absolutely look to I've got two point. final speakers, Councillor Harper and Councillor Jones. Councillor Harper. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Oh, oh, There's some beautiful blackthorn bushes there. Planting wildlife as in birds, you know, you could stand there and you could hear the birds. Yeah. Now, can you hear the birds? Because we ripped all the bloody th blackthorn out in order to develop it to a nice green bank type setup. So I think we did some damage when we did that quite quickly. I think whatever we do has got to be in line with nature. Just don't rip things out and leave it alone. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Councillor Jones and then Councillor Lawton, yeah. final speaker. Yeah, I, I, oh, it, it's amazing how memories play tricks. I'm just putting my bid in because I seem to recall the boulders were my idea. Well, they <laughs> probably were. Yeah, and I thought you did. There, there were others that wanted food. There were others that wanted food. So hold on. Okay. <laughs> right. Councillor Lawton. Thank you. I don't know if this is quite the forum for this oh. or I'm quite the person to be talking about this. But Quite a lot of reference has been made 
to uh, wilding, uh, letting biodiversity occur, and not mowing. Now, as you probably know, I live on Hayden Park Estate, where there are areas on there that form part of this policy now. When I first moved there, I was struck by how many dandelions there were. Now it's left to go wild in places, and particularly in May, the dandelion season, there are more than ever. And of course, all the seeds go onto adjacent gardens. So my general point is, um, is it sufficient just to leave the land as it is, or is that actually only half the story? And it ought not to have some sowing of, of diverse plants and things, and not just left the dandelions and dock leaves. Thank you. I refer to um, uh, no, no, I'm not going to curtail this debate now, because you've had plenty of time to speak. Um, Chief, officer. Chief officer. I'm, just going to say, I'm very keen to read this policy when it comes out. Yeah. And I'm very keen to write it. <laughs> When you've written it, you let me know, and then we'll have yes, a conversation. Yes, then, then we'll have this conversation again. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. We're going to move on. Are you happy with that presentation? Yeah, very. Thank you very much. Move on to receive presentation on the Butterfly Garden Management Arrangements. Chief right, Officer. You are presentation number two. Uh, history of the Butterfly Garden. This, again, was big through to the Town Council. And it is at the entrance of the town from the Stoke End and previously was managed by the volunteers of Bill from Bloom, who uh, unfortunately have recently decided that they are not able to do that. Um, um, for those who uh, can see there, you've got Bull Lane, Bridge Street, Cratmore, and the piece of land that we own is just, if you're coming from Stoke to Bill, it's just on the left before the car wash there. So that's another one there. It's long and thin. And this is the photo I took of it the other day. It has a pathway running through it that was put in, I guess, by the Bill from Bloom volunteers. Uh, there is gravel under there, but it has been somewhat um, taken over by weeds. Um, but obviously, as you can see at the moment, it's it's been strimmed, so it is quite tidy. It's not... Um, of course, it's not impeccable. It's tidy. The grass is really not long. Um, yeah, go on. This is not a great image, but I couldn't find another way of showing in a photo the issue that we've got as regards water on mm. that side. And obviously, those of you who know that that's Brimley Ford down there, don't the realise the, the issues that we have on this side. And that, that means that we have riparian <laughs> duties. And having riparian duties means that we have responsibilities for water courses. Now, at the top of our site that comes, um, I guess it comes from somewhere behind the back of the um, car wash, there is a small brook. But at this point on our side, there is a much larger uh, section of water that comes from the... Um, Tools. I think that's the best way of it, that were, that were created after the uh, land was managed following the closure of the Black Bull pit. So um, the water comes through our site and uh, gets here. And this is the bit that you can stand on, which is next to what used to be the pub, that mm -hmm. private home there. And then the water disappears onto that. Yeah. So at times, the right of the pub or the left of the pub. As you look at it, it's the rest. Right. Yeah. It's kind of behind the trees, you wouldn't notice that. So you can stand on that, you can get to that, and you can see the water and that where it goes. We go and as a team, we go and look at that regularly to check that there isn't something blocking it. Um, there is usually, it's, it's well looked after. It's also well looked after. Um, I think just there it becomes marvelous. If we look at the at the land uh, land registry, um, because there's an, at times a very heavy rainfall, there is a tremendous amount of water that comes through there. Um, so that gives us our riparian duties. So on the site, we complete an annual tree survey. They're not old trees 
but they are trees which are living in quite a lot of water next to the main road into the town. So take the view that an annual survey is absolutely appropriate there. Um, and then we obviously implement the recommendations there. Hasn't been much to do with the trees, fortunately. We've had branch to chop off um, and some management, some small scale management there. Our Langston team at the moment strims the area and puts the hedges. Obviously, where it is, it's one of the first things that you see as you go into the town on the left. Um, so we try and keep that looking as tidy as possible. We don't have currently at the moment, one thing we need to consider is there isn't an improvement plan. So we haven't got a budget for redoing plants or enhancing planting or anything like that. So maybe that's something you want to think about. At the moment there, because it's in quite a difficult spot, but quite a visible spot as well, we um, essentially keep it tidy. That's our role there. So, I think that's it. Right, lovely. <laughs> So, uh, so far, I think I've got four speakers, if I haven't missed. Councillor Jones, did you wish to speak? Yeah, I'll, thank you. I was just going to ask, is, is, is the butterfly gone? Is there anything been actively done to encourage butterflies? Is it planted up with Budley, or is it just we decided to call it the, or Bloom decided to call it the butterfly god? I imagine at some point the planting was such that it was done to attract butterflies. It's got quite a lot of, um, I think they are irises. Growing water, yeah, I guess that would be irises. Yeah. It looks like there's a lot of, I don't know if they attract butterflies actually, but there's there's not much planting as that I can see that would attract butterflies. But I guess there probably was at some point, or whether that was the ambition. I mean, I would, I would have thought through the chair, I would have thought that you know, something like Budley, which will grow anywhere, uh, I have to say, apart from a mycon, no. to kill them. Um, very well. I have a nice one now. Um, I was a buddy and willow and stuff, so I soaked some of the water up. Yeah. Willow will soak the water up. I've got a willow next to some drains from the field, and that really does a very good job and soaks the water up. It's huge now, and it's going to have to be trimmed back. Uh, that's the problem with willow. It grows at a prodigious rate. Uh, also, if you want some buddy, I've got hundreds, absolutely hundreds of, of Small buddliers dotted around the place. They'll put in anywhere, but they won't grow my flipping up. Oh dear, okay. never mind. Uh, Councillor Garvey. Yes, I think, Chair, thank you, Chair. I think I'm not particularly familiar with that site, and I think I'd, certainly I would benefit from, uh, from a site visit. I think, as the Chief Officer makes the point, this is the gateway, or one of the gateways into the town. And therefore, I think we should have a development and improved plan for the site. Yeah, I agree. I think certainly, there should be some budget allocated to this. Looking at the path there, simply the restoration of that path would be a first step to make it a lot more accessible. And as Councillor Jones has suggested, there are relatively cost-effective ways to improve it in terms of its original remit of the Butterfly Garden. So uh, yes. I would propose that we arrange a site visit. I think that's a good idea. And that we... Uh, agenda a an improvement plan discussion either within this committee or as a separate working group within the committee uh councillor parks yeah I, I guess this applies to the previous area you're talking about as well and again I, you know I, i'm still a new councillor so please you know tell me if i'm speaking out of turn or this is not our remit but what i i feel i'm looking at here is a perfect opportunity for actual for the usage and if you're talking about a long-term plan you think about who's going to use it. And obviously where my passion lies, aside from mental health, is education. Have we not considered where this town could actually create its own forest schools for the children and actually work with the schools or work with the colleges, work with the agricultural students in this area to actually come in and, and work in, in, in those areas? Or even, and this is probably going to be the least popular one of all, but even the unpaid work, people on work, unpaid uh, work orders. Uh, actually coming in and doing some work. What, what, what I'm saying is we've got some areas there and we're looking at a long-term plan and looking at where we as a council might have to invest here or there. But actually, we could put it out there to people who might openly say, yes, please, we would love to bring our students or whatever it may be, because we're always looking for space for them actually to do that, to actually come in and do that. And when you're looking at something like the Butterfly Garden, what a fantastic competition for the local kids to come up with design and, uh, uh, in some way, the butterfly garden for the town. Thank you. Councillor Rogers. 
Yes, thank you. I've always wondered how many people actually use the butterfly guard. Firstly, what's in the blue moon? I've seen somebody in there, but but it's a wet area. I mean, it could be developed to, to a raised garden area or something like schools or possibly. But I've put a raised garden area in there to get away from the water issues, to have nice paths around the raised areas, and then you know, enhance the area. Thank you. I've got two more speakers, Councillor Lawton and Councillor Yates. And Councillor Garvey, you want to come back? If I could, I think the... Uh, no, just uh, towards the end, let the two speak who I haven't spoken before. Councillor Lawton first, then Councillor Yates, then Councillor Garvey. If officer referred to water issues, water considerations on site, um, once again, to take us back to Hayden Park, I led by a culvert where the stream passes under Dorset Drive. That culvert is maintained with some vigour nowadays by the Environment Agency. Is there a chance that some responsibility at the butterfly site could, is theirs as well, for responsibility for maintenance? Officer? Yeah. I can't remember off the top of my head who does look at that, but there is there is a lot of interest in that site already. I don't know if it's if it's United Utilities. I must check on that. I think it is. Yeah, I, I can recall when there's been a lot of flooding on the road there. Uh, the city council had their golly sockers, about two or three of them, and I think United Utilities were there as well. Yeah. I think it's then. Thank you for that. Because it's Kassi. wastewater, isn't it? Mm, yes. That yeah. yeah. Um, and this, if I may share, there's quite a lot of water that runs down from the other side of the road as well, the area that's not maintained that we've talked yeah. about before, that kind of... Mm -hmm. Duchy of Lancaster. Thank you. Yeah, that Duchy thing. of Lancaster, yeah. that is. There's quite a lot of water that runs off that side, so there's been some interest in why that there's yeah. very much water off there as well. Uh, Councillor Yates and then Councillor Garvey. It's just a few things. Uh, the trash screen, that isn't within <laughs> our land then. Yeah. Is that Stoke-on-Trent or Newcastle North? Yes. Stoke-on-Trent. Yeah. That's a relief. Uh, the other thing is, I can't, just picking up on a previous point, I can't see many butterflies being in a garden which is moved to oblivion. Uh, I would first like to see perennial flowers there if you're going to do a butterfly garden, which would crowd out the grass in that respect. You know, I've where you see banks of things which are flowering all the time. And I was picking up on the point which Councillor Rogers said, is how many people, how many middle people actually go down there? Because there's a little bit. It's one thing to have something which looks fantastic from the roadside and the welcome entrance, but is it worth when you could perhaps do something once if you sort of plan it properly with something which then looks after itself? Because nature's done that for millions of years. Uh, and then we'll leave it to that and just just tie, keep the edge tidy so it looks fantastic as you go in, you know. Because I've never seen anybody other than Middle for Bloom or Littlefield because actually walking through that. Yeah. It is a bit down to sign. Right. Um, Councillor Garvey, you want to come back? Then I've got Councillor Redfern to speak. Well, sorry. If Councillor Redfern hasn't spoken, then I'll defer to Councillor Redfern. Yeah, it's right. Just a couple of very quick things. I have walked through the butterfly garden. I certainly know when it was first created, there were quite a number of bushes put in that were there to attract the butterflies. Yes. I think the problem always has been this problem of the water and the plants actually succumbing to the, to the vagaries of when the water flows and when it doesn't. Yeah. I think there always has been a slight problem what's gone in there. Um, but that's, that's not completely solvable. Yeah. I also remember... On occasion, I think there's a wooden gate there, which I certainly made quite a substantial contribution to via Biddleford Bloom. It's one of their projects. So that's what else is going to start thinking of maintenance. I think we need to look at that gate and just check that that whether it's operable. In yeah. good order, because I know it was a particularly ex <coughs> It's a bespoke gate, so it was a particularly expensive thing to have made. It would be nice to make sure that is maintained. Yeah, thank you, Councillor Redfern. I've got Councillor Erdley and then Councillor Garvey. Councillor Erdley. Yeah, uh, I'm a bit like Councillor Yates stated. It doesn't seem to justify spending a great load of money on it for the thoroughfare it gets. Is there any opportunity of connecting it as a spur to the Biddle Valley Way because it backs right onto it, which would make it interesting for walkers through the area to pass through the it's office. 
I don't think it does, but it does. No, it doesn't. Well, it yeah, it's too because it's it's the wrong side of the stream. There, there is there is a chance of connecting it. The only complication is unbelievably is that section of Biddle Valley Way is Newcastle and the line here. So you've got ownership issues. It's it's something which every time you say to most people in Biddle, they think you're stupid and shouldn't shout down. And so he says, all that's in Biddle. No, it isn't. 80% plus of that section of land is Newcastle and the line. It's not Biddle. And it's it's something which most people would not acknowledge that, except that that's a thing. Never mind acknowledges. Well, the takeover bid, perhaps. <laughs> Uh, final speaker, Councillor Garvey. You've been patient. Uh, thank you, Chair. The, the, I would, I was coming back centrally again uh, against um, Councillor uh, Rogers' suggestion. I think the problem we have there with the land being waterlogged, we need to work with that and make a planting that is suitable yeah. for a heavily watered, waterlogged, heavy ground area. We can do that relatively easily by the correct choice of plants. Right. You'll know from our discussions, Chief Officer, when we were at the um, pocket park, the wet area behind the, um, the bench there. We can work with that sort of ground to create a garden or a planting that's suitable for that sort of ground. If we try and fight nature, we're going to lose. It's rather bigger force than we are. We need to work with it and have the planting that's appropriate for the ground. And that just takes a certain amount of, a small amount of thought and planning and that may be considered and a considered development and improvement plan that's actually been thought about to work with the, the, the site rather than trying to impose something on which is entirely unsuitable for that site. Right. Well, the well thought there, a spot on, absolutely. Don't fight nature, work with it. Um, are you happy with that presentation? Yeah. Right. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Jackson, do you want to come back quickly? Um, whoever's in charge of the utilities. That's fine. I know there's a hell of a lot of work, flood, flood, flood uh, alleviation work going on in that area. Some reed beds further back, uh, below the fishing, below the fishing pool, were put in by certain one of the utilities, and also mitigating. But really, four would have been flooded. I, I reckon this year seven times in the past. It's better than it was, although it's still. It still gets flooded down there, but it would have been flooded a hell of a lot more without that work. You know. Thank you very much, Councillor Garvey. Exactly. I'm going to move on now, please, because uh, I'm conscious of the time. Jobs for Langsman, standing agenda item. Please throw them at us. Carl oh, Kosicki. Yeah, uh, I've had a request from uh, Mrs. Ellen Faulkner about the condition of the bus shelter in uh, Woodland Street. I don't know whether it's within the remit of the town council to re repair the windows or clean them of any graffiti. Same with, same with the one on uh, Church Road. I've emailed you about that. Sir. Yeah, yeah point, of, point of clarification on that. That was raised at the county council meet, pre-meeting before, and they, they are county council bus shelters, and council flunder oh. knows he has to take them off. Lovely. Thank you very much. Yeah. Any other Woodland Street one? Any yeah. other items? Uh, Councillor Adam Pox. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm not quite sure. Again, I'm, I'm still learning whether this is a job for, job for the Lensman, but the, um, the trees on the bend um, are up Thames Drive. Um, as it goes, where the post box is. Uh, the trees there, one of those actually is, is interesting. One of those is one of my, is my dad's actual memorial tree. Um, and, and it's been brought to my attention that they're starting to overgrow over the path, but not so much that is that my dad's memorial plaque has been pulled out, um, but my mum managed to rescue it, and it's at her home. I don't know if that can be refitted. What is it? It, 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 the, the memorial tree was presented by the council in, for my father. It'll be replaced. It'll be replaced. Okay. Any more? No, that's it. Yes, 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 yes. Let's go on. There's, there's just this. There's a person with restricted eyesight who walks up. Uh, uh, Meadows Way towards Aldi, and there is an overgrowth of uh, edge row there, which could do with trimming back. Uh, and it usually carries over, over around the corner, which is what we do look after normally. Whether we can just do that, that would be lovely and efficient. Thank you very much. Going to move on to the confidential item. Consider land opportunities, and we move on to the confidential. Thank you, YouTube viewers. Thank you very much for being with us. Uh, we now have to move into confidential. We've got one item. So uh, thank you for your 
uh, uh, appreciated 